It's another beautiful day in the Hawaiian Islands. The palm trees are swaying, the ocean is calm, but like many places in the United States, the island of Maui is always under the threat of a hurricane. But did you know that most families are unprepared to deal with such a disaster? Well, today we're going to show you how to strap your home down so it doesn't get blown away in a hurricane and to develop a disaster kit that will help you ride out the storm. The island of Maui is one of the most ecologically diverse places in the world. The beautiful sandy beaches along the coastline are only a few miles from the breathtaking rainforests that line the sheer walls of the Maui Mountains. But the wind blows hard off the Pacific Ocean, and many of the homes here could be in the path of a potential hurricane, tidal wave, or tropical storm. Because of this, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, has chosen Maui County as a Project Impact community. Project Impact is a program that's educating homeowners on how to make their communities more disaster resistant. Today, we're going to show you several ways to modify an existing home to make sure it's still standing after the next disaster hits. In 1992, Hurricane Aniki, which did major damage to the island of Kauai, came within 70 miles of the south coast of Maui. As you can see, the home that we're working on today is in a direct path of a hurricane. Well, I'm with Jay Chivers of Hurricane Protection Systems, and Jay, you can tell us how to make our homes more hurricane resistant. Yeah, there's many things that you'd like to do to your house to, uh, to protect it from the wind. Back here, we've got a trellis that's on this uh, nigh area. We're putting these rafter clips to hold the rafters to the beam itself. The beam is already bolted through the post below, so that's held pretty good, but we want to make sure the rafters don't come apart on the trellis. But what we really want to do is make sure that the roof stays on the house itself. If you'd like, come on over here and we'll see what Clinton's doing to see how we take care of that. Great. Well, I guess Jay's job one is making sure that you get the roof strapped down to the house. What do you use in the way of clips? There's many different types of uh, clips that fit, that fit different situations. These two here are ones that we get from Eagle. This one is galvanized. That's the way you get it from the store. Then we'll get this and we'll spray it with this metal primer. Uh, that's to facilitate uh, finish paint when we get to the end. Now, up here, they're actually putting a clip on every rafter? Yes. We, in a retrofit situation, you want to get every rafter attached to the wall line. When the house is built in the first place, you've got just toenails holding the rafter to the That's wall line. That's a nail just driven at an angle through the rafter to the top plate. Correct. Those only have so much holding power. Now we've got is now we've got these nails going through the trim, through the siding, into the top of the wall, get, give a secure connection there, and then the nails in the rafter. Now we've got the rafter really held well to the wall line. Now the nails that you use, I have a couple of them here. One, of course, is a long one that has some rings on it. This is what we call a ring shank nail. It's pretty long. Yes, that's two and a half inches long. We use those when we do have to go through siding and trim to make sure we get a good bite into the top of the wall itself. And the other one is a small one, smaller one that goes into the side of the rafter. Correct. When you don't have to go through all the siding, when you get straight into the actual structure, you can use a shorter nail. Yeah, now basically the idea here is that we end up with a rafter that's tied securely to the frame of the house so that the whole roof system basically is, is connected to the frame. Correct. Then it's going to have to do a lot more to take the roof off. Well, Jay, what are you hoping to accomplish with a steel cable? This is referred to as a Dutch gable, and this last rafter here, the way they're built in Hawaii, is they're left short so that these shingles can run up underneath here, and they, it's easier to get a good water seal that way. But the only thing that's holding this down is the sheeting that goes back along here. So we're trying to hold this down with this cable so that if the wind blows here, when this picks up, it'll pull down on the other side so it can barely move at all, and it's keeping it down on the roof. How do you install this? We will take a turnbuckle like this with a carriage bolt on the end. We'll take this carriage bolt and we'll bolt it through to an eye nut on the back side. Then the turnbuckle will attach that and then the cable will go across. Uh, a homeowner can get this cable from their hardware store. They can get cable this clamps. This is stainless steel cable and galvanized material so Correct. it doesn't rust. Correct. Everything is very uh, corrosive resistant on this. And so they can get a clamp on here, get the cable, everything from a hardware store, put it together, and then just hook it up to the air eye bolt on this side, eye bolt on that side, tighten down the turnbuckle, you got the bottoms held very tightly. And basically the idea is to create kind of a strong triangle to kind of hold this thing together so in heavy winds it doesn't uplift and tear off this portion of the roof and get a lot of water damage. Correct. The whole thing won't tear off in one shake. If you can keep this side down, the whole thing won't come off. But if it does, you get a lot of water damage inside because a lot of the damage after a storm is due to the water getting inside.
Well, Jay, one of the biggest problems in storms and hurricanes is flying debris. Now, this system looks like it would stop a flying coconut or two. Correct. Windborne debris is a challenge. This is a sliding glass door we've protected. Dave and Clinton will show how this comes back down. Um, it's a system that we've developed so that homeowners can economically protect their own doors and windows. Now, what's neat about this is you can take it up and put it down as many times as you need to. Correct. You, if you start putting in nails and screws into your uh, do windows and jams, if you're nailing up plywood, then you're going to be doing damage to the structure and the fiber. Yeah. Now, what size uh, wood is this? This is a uh, half inch, three quarter inch. This plywood? is a half inch plywood. Three quarter is more recommended, but it's really hard for a homeowner to deal with the weight. Yeah. Now, the heart of the system are these studs, and uh, I have one here in my hand. This is kind of neat. It's it has a, a lag bolt that goes right through the trim into the frame, and then it's got these neat little uh, quarter twenty studs that holds up the plywood. Correct, and then when the time comes when you're done with it, now you go ahead and back out the stud, take that out. Then there's this ultraviolet resistant cap that goes in place so that now when you're not using the system, that's all that's showing for a homeowner on a day in and day out basis. Yeah, it looks great. We've shown you some very simple things you can do to make your home more storm safe, but if you'd like to learn more about how to make your home hurricane resistant, contact us on the internet at michaelholligan.com. Mm -hmm.